Okay, well, let's continue with this analysis. Uh, now, uh, what I'm going to do here is uh, plot instead the uh, temperature as a function of year. Uh, that's plot number one. And uh, we no longer want a trend line here. Um, that's uh, blue. That's the State College December temperatures. And now for plot number two, I am going to plot the Nino 3.4 index uh, for that year. And I'll use axis B to put them on the same scales. Uh, so here uh, we can see um, the two series, blue, the December temperatures, red is the uh, Nino 3.4 index. And you can see that um, in various uh, individual years, there does seem to be a relationship where large positive departures of the Nino 3.4 index are associated with warm Decembers, and large uh, negative departures are associated with cold temperatures. So we can see visually that relationship um, that uh, we also saw when we plotted uh, the two variables in a two-dimensional scatter plot and looked at the slope of the, uh, the line relating the two data sets. Um, here now we're looking at the time series of the two uh, data sets, and we can see some of that positive uh, covariance, if you will, there, that there does appear to be a positive relationship, although we already know it's a fairly weak relationship. Uh, now uh, let's do the formal regression. Um, so uh, I'm going to take away the El Nino series. So here we've got State College December temperatures in blue. Now our regression model um, is going to use the Nino 3.4 index as our independent variable as a predictor of State College December temperatures, our dependent variable. We'll run the linear regression. Um, there's uh, the uh, slope, 0.74 is the coefficient that describes the uh, relationship in how temperature depends on the Nino 3.4 index. It's positive. We already saw that the slope was positive. Um, there's also a constant term uh, that we're not going to worry about too much here. Um, what we're really uh, interested in is the slope of the regression line that describes how changes in temperature depend on changes in the Nino 3.4 index. Um, and uh, as we've seen, that's a 0.74 uh, implies that for uh, a unit increase in Nino 3.4 in an anomaly of plus 1 on the Nino 3.4 scale, we get a temperature for December that on average is 0.74 degrees Fahrenheit warmer than average. Um, the R squared value is 0.03. 301. Well, if we take 0 0.0301, 0 0.0301, and take the square root of that, that's the R value of 0 0.17, um, 0 0.1734. And we know it's a positive uh, correlation because the slope is positive. We already looked up the statistical significance of uh, that number and we found that for a one-sided hypothesis test that the relationship is significant at the 0.05 level uh, but if we were using a two-sided significance criterion hypothesis test that is to say if we didn't know a priori whether we had reason to believe that El Nino's warm or cool State College December temperatures uh, then the relationship would not quite be statistically significant Okay, so we've calculated um, the, uh, the linear model. Um, we can now plot it. So now I'm going to plot year and model output um, on the same scale. And so now the red curve is showing us the component of variation in the blue curve that can be explained by El Nino. And we can see it's a fairly small component. It's small compared to the overall level of variability in December state college temperatures, um, which uh, vary by as much as uh, plus or minus uh, 4 degrees or so Fahrenheit. Uh, the standard deviation um, is uh, close to